time to go back to the island where the green arrow started. Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where we take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Don't forget to support this great industry by using these recaps to allow you to find the books that you enjoy and then going out to your local comic book store or buying them online. This is New 52 Green Arrow, Volume 5, The Outsider's War. When we last left off, Oliver Queen had discovered the secret of his father, Robert Queen. He had been on a journey of enlightenment by looking for the Green Arrow, a totem weapon of legend that once found would give its owner enlightenment and control of the Arrow clan. A mysterious man named Magus had sent Oliver off to find the one person that knows the location of the Green Arrow, Shadow, his father's former lover. And she informed Oliver that if he was going to fight against Komodo and the Totem Clans, that he would need to go to the location of the Green Arrow and claim it himself. And it's on the island. The very island that Oliver was stranded on and became the superhero known as the Green Arrow. With their objective in mind, Oliver and Shadow land their helicopter on the island and they begin to move to the location that she knows that it should be kept at. As they land, Oliver asks her where they're going. He knows this entire island. There isn't a single secret spot that he doesn't know about, and Shadow continues to lead him. Meanwhile, Magus and the leader of the Axe Clan discuss what's about to happen. The Outsider Clans will rise, and they will fight against Oliver once he gets the Green Arrow. The Outsider's War is coming. Shadow takes Oliver to a normal-looking cliff face, and she asks him for an explosive arrow. She then takes aim and destroys the cliff face, revealing stairs deep into a cave. Oliver is in shock. Where does this go? How did he miss this? He was living on this island. As they enter the main cavern, Shadow welcomes Oliver to the resting place of the Arrow Clan, the home of the Totem Weapon. But the Outsiders have been following Shadow ever since Oliver rescued her from Count Vertigo, and they are on their way right now to the island to kill both Oliver and Shadow. Back in the tomb, Oliver approaches the pedestal, and he sees that the Green Arrow, the Totem Weapon, the weapon of the Arrow Clan, is gone. It's missing. Shadow looks at him. You really haven't figured it out yet, have you? What are you talking about, Shadow? Don't tell me that you just accepted the coincidence that you ended up stranded on the same island that your father marked as the home of the Arrow Clan? What are you talking about? Their conversation is interrupted by the sound of banging drums and approaching enemies. But when they turn around, Oliver sees that it isn't drums that they're banging on. It's the S.H.I.E.L.D. clan approaching with their war cry. Meanwhile, in Japantown, San Francisco, Magus approaches a silent warrior to ask if Tatsu would join him. But when she takes her blade to his throat, he corrects his statement. Uh, do you prefer Katana? He explains that everything she has been looking for is connected. The Sword Clan, the Coil, the Mona Shard. It's all a part of the Outsiders. Back with Oliver, he and Shadow begin throwing as many arrows as they can. But this is the Shield Clan, and they take them all with their shields. They then throw their shields back, hitting Oliver in the face. Shadow turns to Oliver. They're too fast with those shields. Our arrows are useless. That's what I've been telling you, Shadow. You need some trick arrows. And Oliver jumps up, doing a flip, throwing an explosive arrow into the Shield Clan. I am never making fun of those again, she says, as he throws some to her. Using net arrows, explosive arrows, and green fire arrows, they make their way out of the cave, but they find themselves being stopped by the Shield Clan's leader, Kodiak, as he jumps on them at the exit. Shield's stronger than bow, little man. You damned clam heads talk too much, Oliver says, firing another arrow at Kodiak. But Shadow grabs Oliver, and they both run into the forest, trying to make their escape. Luckily, this is the island that Oliver made his home all of those years ago, so he knows exactly where to go, and he brings her to a little hut. As they get closer, Shadow stops Oliver. It's time for you to admit it, Oliver. No more jokes. None of this was an accident. You were put on this island. Why do you think those men tortured you for weeks, yet never killed you? You were never being tortured. You were being tested. And you were never being hunted. You were being trained. And you know who did this to you. No! Oliver shouts, still refusing to admit it, and that's when he hears a voice behind him. I'm sorry, Oliver. I had no choice. After I died, I had to bring you here to keep you safe from Komodo to prepare you for war. Oliver turns around to find his father standing there. Robert Queen is alive. Oliver throws him into a tree. This is a lie! My father's dead! Who are you? Your first battle scar was a raspberry. What? You fell off your bike I bought you, and you called the mark a battle scar. Oliver lets his father go. No, 
This can't be. Everything that happened on the island was his own father training him for this battle, this war with the outsiders. And it was even his father that let him go in the end for a final battle on the shoreline. Oliver almost killed his father that day, but Magus brought him back while Oliver went home to become the Green Arrow. Robert Queen presents the arrow to Oliver. It's time for us to reclaim our birthright, Oliver. To reclaim the outsiders. It's just an arrow! You left me! You left mom for this! You aren't my father! You're a madman! But before they can continue their argument, Kodiak, the leader of the S.H.I.E.L.D. clan, has arrived. Robert, Shadow, and Ollie all jump in and begin to battle it out with the beast of a man. And with him distracted, Robert Queen lands an arrow into his gut, incapacitating him. Then Oliver walks over, grabs the S.H.I.E.L.D., and knocks his own father out. Go to hell, Shadow, and take him with you! Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Outsiders, the head of the Spear Clan begins his speech about preparing for Oliver and the Arrow Clan. But Komodo makes his move, and he sides with the Fist Clan, and they break the head of the Spear Clan's spear, and Komodo takes control of the Fist and the Spear Clans. He then tells his newest followers that it's time to prepare for war with the Arrow, the Axe, and the Sword Clans. The whole time, Amiko is watching for the shadows at the man that she thinks is her father, when in fact, she's actually Oliver's half-sister and Shadow's daughter. No time is wasted though, as Oliver moves right for the Outsider's headquarters and he begins his attack by launching his Thunderclap arrow, dropping a bunch of the guards. He then jumps in, kicking one of the villains in the head and firing an arrow into the barrel of a pistol. He then immediately realizes his mistake. These aren't random thugs. The spear has been watching him the whole time. Oliver looks up and he fires an umbrella arrow into the sky, and green fire begins to rain down on the spear clan, giving him the distraction that he needs to grab one of the members of the clan. Where is Komodo? But then another member of the clan chucks a spear into the man that Oliver is holding, and he flees. Well, crap, Oliver thinks, so he looks at what they were shipping, and he discovers sarin gas canisters. I need to find their cathedral, he thinks to himself as he looks over all of Prague. Once again, it doesn't take him long to find them, and he breaks in through the roof, only to find a couple of Spear Clan members waiting for him. They grab him, and they put him to the ground, and the head of the Fist Clan walks over and cracks him across the jaw. And then, Komodo arrives at the Miko. He tells her to kill Oliver. Do it now! And she walks over to Oliver and demands to know the location of her mother. He tries to tell her that this is all a lie. She isn't supposed to be with Komodo. But she won't listen. It's all a lie, she says. She doesn't know what to trust. With tears in her eyes, running down her face, she draws an arrow from her quiver. And she begins to pull it back so she can fire it at Oliver's head. But she can't do it. She can't take his life. I guess you haven't completely ruined her yet, Komodo, Oliver says with a smirk. So Komodo steps forward and puts an arrow through Oliver's forehead, killing him. That's not the end of our story, though. Oh, it can't end there. Robert, Shadow, and Oliver come crashing through the nearby window. Komodo looks up in shock as the two people that he thought he killed are right here in front of him. And the Oliver on the ground stands up and pulls the arrow out of his own head. He then begins to shift his appearance into Magus the Mysterious Man, the one that started Oliver on this entire journey. He looks at Oliver. The seventh weapon is here by your side, Oliver. The mask has returned. Then the axe and the sword arrive, and war has begun. Mask, axe, sword, and arrow versus spear, shield, and fist. Everyone starts fighting with weapons and fists flying all over the place, teeth, blood, and spit being thrown about. And then Komodo makes a run for it, taking Amiko with him. Magus looks to Oliver and Katana. Oliver, get the girl back, and Katana, kill Onyx, the leader of the Fist Clan. On the rooftop, Komodo and Amiko see Shadow, and she demands that Komodo give back her daughter. Komodo and Amiko turn around to see her, and both are surprised that she's there. Both Komodo and Shadow draw arrows and fire at each other, with Komodo dodging Shadow's barely, but Komodo's landing in Shadow's shoulder. Meanwhile, Oliver gets out of the building and he follows his father, Robert Queen, to the location. This way, Oliver. All of this concern over your child is really heartwarming, Dad. What's next? Maybe you could torture her if you get her back? Robert turns around and he grabs Oliver, punching him across the jaw. Enough, Oliver. What's done is done, and it turns you into the hero that you are today. You really are delusional, aren't you, Dad? The island didn't make me what I am. It was Mom. She showed me true courage. She faced death with dignity and grace. I saw it in her eyes. I saw the love for this world, love for me, and her desire to make things better. And where were you? Where were you when your wife died of cancer? Off playing secret agent on an island. Tell me, Dad, which one of us really needed to grow up? Oliver, when I held the arrow, I saw our futures. I saw it all. I saw what I had to do. Save it, Dad. I don't believe in some damned enchanted arrow of enlightenment. She taught me love, and you taught me hate. To truly hate you, 
That's when both Robert and Oliver hear Shadow getting struck by the arrow in the shoulder, and they run to her side. They find Komodo with an arrow ready to fly into Shadow, but Amiko standing between them. Please don't kill her, Dad. Oliver gets his arrow ready, and Komodo asks, Can you take me before I fire at her, boy? Amiko continues to beg her father, Stop this, please! And he tells her, He'll kill her if he has to, just to keep her away from them. So Oliver lets his arrow fly, and Komodo lets his fly, and Robert runs to Amiko. He leaps between her and the arrow, taking the arrow directly into his back. He then hits the ground, and Oliver runs to his side as Komodo begins to run off. Don't let that bastard get away, Oliver. I'm not leaving you, Dad. We need Green Arrow now, Ollie. We need the hero. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry, Ollie. Sorry for everything. And then, Robert passes away in his arms. Oliver grabs the totem weapon, ready to end this. And that's when he sees everything. The enlightenment that everyone told him about. The past, the present, the future. It's all laid out before him. And he ignores it so that he can go after Komodo. Meanwhile, Katana has been chasing down Onyx. She has her own personal mission to complete. And she jumps onto a boat pulling away. And in the pouring rain, she gets ready to face off with the fist. While Oliver chases Komodo in the same rain to the nearby town. Komodo begins their battle by firing an arrow at Oliver, cutting the bowstring on his bow. Oliver drops the totem weapon on the ground as Komodo lands in front of him. And distracted by the weapon, Komodo runs for it. The arrow, finally! He takes it into his hands. And then he sees the past, the present, and the future. No, no, me! what have I done? He exclaims. And then Oliver kicks him in the mouth, breaking his mask off of his face. He reels on the ground, telling Oliver he saw it all. It's over. And then... An arrow goes through his chest. Amiko fired it, killing the man that she thought was her father. Over on the boat, Katana and Onyx are going at it, but it doesn't take Katana any effort as she pins Onyx's foot on the ground and she cuts off her arm, separating her from her totem weapon. Onyx then turns to Katana, begging for mercy. Sword beat fist, and Katana calls up Magus, telling him that it's done. Everyone convenes. The job is done. They've won. They've defeated the outsider clans. And Magus turns to Oliver and he tells him that Oliver will need to lead the outsiders now. He is the Arrow Clan leader. And Oliver breaks the totem arrow in half. He's done with all of this nonsense. He's done with Magus, his father, Shadow, all of them. I'm going to put this behind me. Amiko, I can't force you to leave these maniacs, but you've been lied to as well. Even more than me, the outsiders have ruined your life. No matter what, you are my sister. And I'll take you with me if you want. She looks to her mother and then she tells Oliver... And this is all she knows. So he leaves. And he tells everyone that he's done and he walks away. It's time to go back to Seattle. To his friends, to his team. And everything that he's built. Or did build so that he could rebuild it again. And it's a good thing. Because his friends are going to need his help with all of these villains that are forming up in Seattle. I personally love this book and the mysticism that they added to the Green Arrow character. And I highly recommend picking up Volume 5. We did skip over an entire side plot in which Diggle is fighting against all of those villains that we showed on the last panel. So if you want to find out the full, full story, make sure you pick up the trade yourself. But don't worry, we will be wrapping up this entire storyline with Oliver's Return to Seattle very soon. I'm Benny for Comic Story, and if you enjoyed this video, check out the other ones on the screen right now. You just might like those also. I'll see you next time right here.